privilege of broadcasting his uh, fights when he fought for the world title of the WBO. And as I said at the very outset, he came very, very close, losing a split decision. But this guy can bang, he can punch, he has a lot of experience, and he'll know how to handle a young, upcoming Joseph Parker. He'll know what to do in there. Here he is, Kelly Meehan. By the way, one of the real good guys in the sport. Hundred and ten point six zero. One ten point six zero. And the crowd goes off. Build up this fight. I asked you yesterday, business as usual, but there's a lot of hype in this fight, obviously, because Joseph is essentially the hometown hero, but then again, you're a hometown hero. You spent 28 years in Avondale, um, fights in West Auckland tomorrow night. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of support for you uh, in West Auckland at the Trust Arena. I do hope so, yeah. Mark, I don't know about being a hero. I just try to be a good man, good father to my sons, good uh, husband to my wife, and try and put on a good show and just show that, um, you know, we do produce good boxes from this side of the world, and I'm honoured to be part of this massive event. I'm honoured to be, um, you know, I know this is a stepping stone for Joseph Parker, and he has to try and get through me if he's going to get through anywhere in the world stage, and it's no secret. So I've prepared as best I can, and you know, I'll do my best to put a stumbling block on his path. Do you honestly believe he hasn't had a fight like you before? Oh, well, that's why the place is sold out. What is it that you're going to bring that other fighters have not bought before? I mean, I've got the experience, but uh, it's, it, experience covers a wide range of things in Boston, but it's no use having the experience if you haven't got the lungs. So I really made sure I've done the hard work. I've been sparring with a good unit here. I've been sparring with dry up a tire. I've got good speed and angles. I've been sparring some other boys. I've been just really, really, really working hard. I've left no stone unturned. And, you know, I really aim to put on a good show for the fans tomorrow night. Do you study Joseph's tapes or not really? Because he's only fought 11 rounds in five fights over the last 12 months. You've fought obviously 10 rounds against Shane Cameron. Is there much that you can read when he's when he's dispatching opponents that quickly? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously he has got fast hands. He's a um, talent on the rise. It's obvious. I look for flaws in, in my opponents, and they're flaws that I can try and capitalize on. And that's what I think when I when I watch him fight, I just try and find flaws that I think can be for him. And you found flaws. Hope so. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've found fours. Um, if I can capitalize them, remains to be seen, but I'll give them my best shot. I'm going to set myself up here, but could you tell us what his fours are? No. <laughs> 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 no I, I did set myself up. I knew you were going to say that. Hey, Carly, all the very best. Uh, just wait there for a second as we welcome uh, a New Zealand sporting sensation who is the sixth most Googled New Zealander in 2014. He has fans all around the world, and as you saw yesterday, his latest one is Evander Holyfield, the real deal, the five-time world champion who's describing Joseph Parker as the new deal. Could you please welcome Joseph Parker? As Joseph makes his way up to the scale, undefeated 15 and 0 with 13 knockouts, a sensational knockout in his last fight down in Invercargill. Turned pro in 2012, and since then, getting hooked up with Kevin Barry, he's learned so much and he continues to develop. And as he develops as a boxer, he's developing uh, in terms of his size and his skills. He's much thicker, he's much heavier, he's much more muscle now, and he's going to continue to grow. And now he's up against a big, tall man, one of the tallest guys he's ever fought, and certainly the longest reach. And so Joe will have his work cut out for him tomorrow. But he's well prepared because he loves to train. And Kevin uh, has he and Izu Ogano working together, which really gives him great sparring. And Joseph Parker is ready to fight Kelly Mead. Seven kgs. Yeah. You. And the crowd goes extra wide. <laughs> you should come to all our events. <laughs> Have you got tickets for tomorrow? 
Joseph started putting his shit back on Kevin Barry. Uh, 107 kilos, uh, Colonel Bob was talking about it. Joseph is definitely growing into his body. Yeah, it, uh, I said to uh, Dean Lonigan and Dave Higgins a couple of years ago that uh, it would take a good two years for Joseph Parker to mature and grow into his body, and I think we're seeing that evolve now. He's, uh, he's a totally different looking athlete than he was in 2013. Um, Carly has said there are flaws. Is that a fair statement, or is that like Look, there's, there's flaws in, in everyone's game, and, and Carly hit the nail on the head when he said it's a matter of whether or not they can expose those flaws. Um, you know, nobody's a perfect fighter, and even a guy with a great defence, you know, you can make your own holes in their defence. So, with Carly being experienced, are you expecting him to try and take it to deep water, or are you expecting him to try and get in there early and, and shake up the young line? I'm expecting the experience of Carly Meehan to be a great test for a young Joseph Parker. Let's remember, Carly's fought 12 rounds 21 times. He's an 18-year pro. There's nothing in the sport of boxing that he hasn't seen. He's seen every style. So I don't know whether he's ever seen anyone as fast as Joseph Parker, but we'll find out tomorrow night. So the last time Joseph fought someone this tall was Nascimento in Germany in 2014. Joseph got a perforated eardrum. <laughs> Been well documented. Uh, Izu Ugona, who we saw earlier, I think is six foot five. Carly six foot six. Um, can we expect Joseph to be in any trouble uh, against the taller fighter tomorrow night, or has that now been negated and it really is not an issue? Well, as Joe's trainer, I hope he's not in any trouble tomorrow night. And if he is, uh, I'll be very concerned. But yeah, we've trained really, really hard. I've made it no secret that uh, out of the 11 training camps that we've done together, I believe this is probably the best work that we've, that we've had. Uh, Health-wise, he's been terrific. No injuries. We've had tremendous sparring. And uh, both my two heavyweight fighters are in prime condition. Uh, when you guys come back from Vegas, it's about 10 days of hectic media shenanigans, I'm sorry. You know, it happens all the time. In the 12 months since the Sherman William fight, which was at Trust Arena. How has the hype changed? First of all, around Joseph, and how is it affecting Joseph? Well, I think, you know, we've, we've all watched Joe over the last two and a half, two and three quarter years mature into the young man that he is today, not just physically, but mentally. If you listen to him speak two and a half years ago, compared to the man that sits down and does television interviews one after the other today, he's a much more complete, much more confident fighter and a much more confident person. Uh, and there's, you know, when you talk about hype, there is far more hype around him now because people are sensing that there is something really special going on with this young man and they want to be part of it. Is the confidence due to the time spent with Klitschko where he now believes he really is up there? No, I think this has been overplayed by yourself and other people many, many times. You know, let's remember we did three weeks in camp with Klitschko and, and Joe Spartan five times, and I wanted, I asked the, the camp manager that we'd spar every single day for the three weeks, but we sparred them five times, so don't, don't read too much into that. The, the confidence that Joseph possesses now is 
is work of the last two and a half years. It's, a, it's work in the gym, it's the results in the fights, and how hard he prepares himself for fights like this. Look, I thought it was a very interesting article in the paper at the weekend talking about Tyson Fury, and obviously that's a decision you guys have to make after uh, this fight. But Tyson Fury is well known for bagging everyone from Anthony Joshua to uh, Vladimir Klitschko to David Hay, and yet he seemed to have, the camp seemed to have enormous respect for Joseph. That's, I've got to say, I'm pleasantly surprised. Well, you know, we're, we're pleasantly surprised too. It sort of it came out of the blue, but they've been very respectful to us, and, and in turn we've been respectful to them. They've invited us about four times to join them. It's never worked in with our schedule. Right now we have a very small window before our next planned event, um, and, and the fact that we're going, we'd be going to the Northern Hemisphere it would make it very difficult for us to join them. But, you know, it's, it's actually quite funny. There's this new thing out, Periscope, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with. Joe's been periscoping with uh, Tyson, you know, on a daily basis in, in the gym. So uh, they've become good mates, and there's, there's good mutual respect there. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Joseph, if you come forward. Obviously, the big thing coming out of this is Carly thinks there are a couple of flaws in, in you. Uh, the thing is, though, uh, you've been working very hard on well-publicised defence. If you've been in camp for eight weeks, how much time you spend on defence in that, in that period? Is it sectioned off, or do you? It's just part of the, the gig. Um, well, hello everyone. Thank you for being here today. Uh, well, the training camp has been uh, amazing, and like Kevin said, it's one of the best training camps we've had. And to answer your question, you know, I just leave it up to Kevin to um, decide what we need to work on in the gym. All I have to do as a student is to you know, listen to the coach and uh, do what I have to do to prepare myself and let's train up. Um, I know you've had the ball under your, your chin. Are you still doing that to keep your chin down? No, I, um, I don't need the ball anymore. <laughs> the chins are naturally staying down now, so that's a uh, bit 24 hours out from a fight, 36 hours out from a fight. What do you do? Oh, um, I just want to do the same thing that we do in every other fight. Uh, I'm going to relax, play some music, do some dancing, and play some PlayStation. <laughs> I suppose it's only fair that I ask you the same question. Do you see flaws in Carly Meehan that you can explore? Hey, like uh, Kevin said again before, everyone has flaws. And, you know, we've watched this tape, and we've seen the strengths and weaknesses that he has. And we've come into this fight with a good game plan, a plan that we know that we follow. Um, we can achieve uh, what we want to achieve unless we get the win. The last fight you finished in 66 seconds against Sherman Williams last year at Trust Arena. You went 10 rounds. Which fight did you learn more from? The 10 round fight or the 66 second fight? I learned a lot from every fight. No, I'm serious because tomorrow night potentially you could go 12 rounds and you've been 12 rounds. Well, you know, we trained for 12 rounds and the last fight trained for 12 rounds and uh, now I got him with a good, good punch. I timed it well. But um, with that fight, I learned that you know, if, you, you know, if you sit down and you punch it and you time it well, um, you get a nice result. If there is a casual fan, 50-50 out there at the moment, thinking, should I go tomorrow night or should I not? What would you say to a fan who's never experienced big time boxing and Joseph Parker fights tomorrow? Uh, what would you say to them? Come along, have some fun, and see a great night of fights in action. <laughs> Thank you, Joseph.